welcome to another week uh, video i hope that you are well and you had a good halloween i confess that i am a bit rusty from making videos because the past videos i posted i had pre-filmed i had to go on a long trip to visit my family in brazil and then i was um, taken by the october art challenges so um, it's been a while since i've done that I hope it will be good and uh, I would like to thank everyone that has uh, taken the time to watch my previous videos, to comment and like, subscribe, I really appreciate. I'm still new at this and I've been <laughs> dealing with some trouble with the YouTube algorithm. It's uh, a steep learning curve for me so I really appreciate everyone that has been engaging with the channel. and liking the content and if you just arrived here and you'd like to see more uh, i would ask that you please subscribe and uh, hit the notifications button to know when i'm gonna be publishing next i usually do it bi-weekly and that's it um, i hope you enjoy today's uh, content uh, now it's getting um, darker sooner because it's uh, winter time here in ireland so i'll be probably um, posting my videos during the weekends when I can uh, have the daylight to film because otherwise <laughs> when I finish working it's just too dark to film and today I'm gonna talk a little bit about these art challenges that I've been doing for October and um, why I joined them and what I think it's uh, good about joining this type of challenges in my experience in the past um, I've started this type of um, October art challenges that actually um, they started a bit with the Inktober hashtag, not so much nowadays. Um, but I think I started it, um, around six or seven years ago with Drawing, that is uh, an October art challenge with uh, Halloween based prompts so basically you have a list throughout the month and then you just post every day using the hashtags and share your art with other people that are also following or joining the challenge and that was really fun and after this i discovered um, maps drawing club that's um, an art challenge uh, promoted by map graves um, is an artist uh, it's very popular on instagram i'm gonna leave it here um the the her handle on instagram so every year she does this um maps drawing club um uh, drawing challenge challenge with um halloween based prompts and then you can follow along in any medium that you like it doesn't need necessarily to be ink it could be anything there are people that do photography she herself does photography pottery sculpting sculpture so it's very open and there's really a lot of people that join these challenges so it's a good opportunity to have uh, more interaction because nowadays instagram it's pretty much focused on reels which is not that great for artists like myself that are more used to posting photos because they get really on the bottom of the of the priorities in the algorithm nowadays so i think when you join this type of challenges it's good to have more interaction with other people to learn about other artists work to show your work to other people so i've been doing this every year and s uh, something that i try personally to do every year i join these challenges to challenge myself to use a medium or a technique or something i'm not used to so i improve throughout the month so i i had some some years where i did for example digital art because it was not something i was doing frequently and i wanted to get better at it and i learned a lot about what i like doing that i'm gonna post some pictures here on the screen while I'm editing so you can see more or less what I did in these uh, years. Um, last year I decided to do um, brush pens only so 
all the line work and coloring the art was all done with brush pens because it was something I wanted to get better at and it requires a lot of practice because it's kind of tricky to get your line work looking good with, a, with this type of brush pen and then this year I decided to go for the deep pen that I showed in one of my previous videos was this a uh, glass pen here so for this uh, maps uh, drawing club 2022 i did all the artwork uh, of course i drew it previously with um, erasable pencil i actually used uh, i don't know if it was all with this color but it was this stabilo norris erasable pencil it's quite um, affordable i think i paid maybe five euro for a box with 12 they are very good and so I did the drawings first and then afterwards I went with the glass pen and I did all the line work with this ink here called sketch ink it's by this brand that I have no idea how to pronounce because I don't speak German but it's um, water uh, proof ink so it's great because you can do all your uh, line work and afterwards paint all on the top of it and it won't smudge if it's dry so i did all of them with this ink here and to color i decided to stick to a very limited palette because i thought that it would also give um, unity to the look of what I wanted to do and it would make my life easier because doing um, an artwork per day even though I was not doing every day there were days I did more or less it's hard enough <laughs> so I think that is a, a tip that I give if you want to join a challenge on any month I'll talk about other type of challenges that you can join throughout the year so personally I find that to make my life easier I would do as um, small drawings so you can see here I decided for this year to do um, type of uh, gallery wall with characters so I first um, prepared the pages with some frames and as I was having ideas of what to put in those frames I would draw the characters not necessarily in the same order as the challenge so you can see here there's number one number three uh, here's number 22 so i went more with the shape of the frame and what i i thought would look good on it so yeah draw drawing small it helps because it's quicker and then you know uh, you can get a better chance of uh, following throughout the challenge without falling behind and another thing is having a limited palette i know that okay i have two or three colors that I can use so it takes away that stress of figuring out what color to use for this artwork or something like that another thing I wanted to show is um, you see here that I have these splotches of paint or ink rather this is not actually it at the beginning it wasn't intentional I was um, drawing something I don't remember what exactly and I got this huge splot here and I was like, oh my god, it's ruined. <laughs> now I had to redo everything, but I just thought, look, that's a, an ink uh, challenge. That's uh, like a gallery wall, and wouldn't it be fun if it was just messy with ink? So I just decided to go with it, and instead of restarting all over again, I did more of it around, a bit more intentionally, so I did kind of, I used this, um, straw here also sometimes to blow that's an also a trick you can use uh, with watercolor or any medium that is liquid enough like ink to blow so you could get these uh, shapes a bit more intentional so yeah i just kept at it and then sometimes i think it's good to go with the flow and try to make the best with what happens or, or uh, happy accidents like Bob Ross would say so yeah this was my first page for the drawing um, 22 I have four pages actually I have, I, I, like I said I didn't have a specific order for, the, for those I was just spreading around the 
prompts according to the the size of the frames and, and such. So I don't know if I can put all of them here. Here I have three of them. I'm going to remove this that you saw for long enough. And then you have another one over here. So as you can see, I, I used basically three, three colors. So that was this uh, brownish, darkish, it's kind of a, yeah, a sepia dark uh, brown, cold brown. And I used the Ecoline, I believe, uh, red violet. So that's the purple I used. And then I used another Ecoline, Vermilion 301. I really, really like this color. So that were these were the colors that I used for the challenge all throughout. I just did um, mix a match of uh, sometimes I would use a little bit more water. Uh, like here, for example, you can see in the shading of the mummy, I used a bit more watered down the ecoline. And here is what <laughs> here was another accident that happened with ink. And then, like I said, I just went with it and I just spread a little bit more around to look intentional because I didn't want to redo everything. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, I have like, you know, the things with this type of uh, challenges. Um, of course, uh, you're never going to like all of the artwork that you do throughout the month. There's always something that I thought I could have done better than that um, or I really like this. There are some happy discoveries as well. Uh, for example, I, I I found out that I really enjoy um, doing line work with this type of pen. I thought it was really fun. Um, I usually don't use a lot of deep pens because with the metal nibs, uh, sometimes if it's a texture paper like this, this paper actually, I'm going to show you what paper I used as well was this um, pad over here by um, Claire Fontaine. It's a very affordable um, pad, you see it has 50 sheets. So I wanted to use a paper that was um, not, uh, didn't feel precious, let's say not super expensive. So I could experiment without fear of, you know, wasting, wasting paper and um, so what I was saying, so I used this paper for the uh, for the challenge and I used this pen because as the paper has a slight texture, I don't know if you can see, it's with the deep pen with the metal nib, sometimes the nib will just um, jump or get stuck on the texture of the paper and then get these uh, splotches and then the line work doesn't look great. I think that with the metal nibs is better to use on smooth paper and I also don't have still the practice to have a line work as neat as I would like um, using the metal nib but with this one I really enjoyed uh, because it's actually a fixed um, width for the line work but for this type of cartoony look that I, I have here in this artwork, I thought it was great. It worked very well. It, it cleans also very well, very easily. You just have to be careful not to break. It's very um, uh, fragile. And yeah, the only thing I noticed with this pen, and this was actually an experience I had using another type of ink, uh, this ink here from Dalleroni. This ink is a bit thicker than the sketch ink or even this one. I use this one as well, Liquitex for other artworks. And this also is very uh, liquid. This is a bit thicker and with this type of ink, when I was using with this pen, you notice that this pen has a spiral uh, shape here. So what happened is I would have the ink here I would take out the excess and while I was doing the line work sometimes uh, the ink would slide in a way here that 
out of nowhere in some movement I was doing I would get a big splotch of ink and then I would get the regular line again so I'm not sure if this is uh, something that I did wrong or if it was because this ink is thicker so you to deposit in um, in a different way on the pen because it's the only type of ink that I had this problem with and I'm gonna show you now also the other um, the other art challenge I joined because I joined two this month uh, as if one wasn't enough and I will show you what I mean by that so the, um, the other artwork um, that I did was for a challenge called Count Ober this was promoted by Crixis I will put also her handle here she's also on YouTube she has very nice videos and yeah her uh, art um her prompts for october uh, were um every two days so, so it was not that hard to follow both challenges i also kind of used uh, some similar uh, materials for this uh, challenge as well and like i said to make my life easier i decided on a palette um, before uh, starting the artwork and i also decided to draw small to facilitate my life so i created this uh, template here with um, acetate i just drew a shape of a polaroid and i cut a bunch of uh, those uh, sheets like i showed you from claire fontaine in this shape and i drew all the prompts and i used the same materials I used for this, uh, except the sketching. I didn't use sketching for this. I used these two dollar only um, acrylic inks. One is flame orange and one is scarlet. I used the sketching. Um, sorry, not sketching. The Liquitex acrylic ink in muted gray. It's one of my favorites. It's very beautiful and the deep violet and i used both the echo lines i showed you before so it was handy because i had all the materials that was using here i was also using here and this echo line that is one of my favorite colors of all time that is called pastel red and sometimes i used a little bit also of this dr martin's um, radiant watercolor and persimmon and another eco line in deep orange that is very similar to the vermilion just slightly more on the orange uh, side than the reddish one so that was it that's what i used i also used um some neo colors some effects here all in that was my um color palette so it was basically oranges reds purple that was it that i also sharpened them as you can see for the first time for some more um, precision when i was doing detailed uh, stuff i have a white here also and a few colored pencils um, random colors like this uh, like i said the same color palette oranges and purples so that was um, the materials for this one i can show you quickly what i did so i hope that is not very bad the lighting because now it's getting a bit cloudy here maybe i'll put some extra lighting here so you have here i did every prompt like i said and I put here the prompt written like it was a Polaroid. And what I liked to do that I also did in this um, challenge, I like to break out of the frame with the drawings. I thought it was interesting to do that. So I did this with some of my drawings here. You can see here for the fox, I used um, the equaline for the coloring, some colored pencil details. And the background was a mix between new color and uh, the eco line i used new color in the background first without water then i got curious how it would look with water on the top uh, so i watered it down a little bit and then i used the um, eco line pastel red 
on top of it and I really liked the effect I found that was a nice texture I had never used Ecoline on top of crayons before and I really enjoyed it it was a nice discovery like I said and all of this I was doing also with this pen using the these inks I showed you before here so here you have Fox Tea Time Cottage all of these with the materials I showed here I also use the um, neo color for a bit of texture and I think I did the top of it with Ecoline eco as well um, I don't remember very well but for sure there is the the new color so here um, bake for this one I was not sure what to do so I did two for window and this was one of my favorites I really enjoyed um, the color palette I used here I'm not using um, I'm not used to working in with this type of monochromatic uh, color palette but I was really happy of how it turned out and I thought I, I think that I will want to do more things like this in the future I also like doing line working in red I find it's really nice book this one I used a little bit of silver around um, to give some effects this one I used um, metallic watercolor for the moon and the background here you see is this um, muted gray that I mentioned that I really really like it's a beautiful color it's kind of a grayish um, purplish gray so yeah here I have more prompts um, flower I had to take a break after because I did a I had a, a short trip to to London and then I came back and I finished the, the other ones um, this I finished this week after coming back this little rabbit I really like how it came out I did hear some texture as well with this um, prisma color here and used eco line on the top what else? I have here pumpkin and rider, right and here is what I want to show. There's one missing. Oh. Yeah, there's also friendship. <laughs> so you can see here that has this blob of paint that got a bit thicker than the rest. That's what I meant when I was talking about this pen with this type of more um, of thicker ink so I was doing all my art all my line work it was all going fine and when I arrived here it just came a big blob of ink so it was a bit out of my control in a sense I don't know if as I was doing the paint was sliding in an irregular way along these um, ridges over here I didn't have the same problem with the other ink so I assume that this type of pen with this um, pattern here it's not it's better to use with um, thinner inks so you have a better control that was my experience anyways but uh, just in case I got myself another one <laughs> because I liked it so much I thought it would be nice to have a different one as well so I'm gonna open to you right now I just received it today I got it from Amazon I'm gonna leave a link below um, this one is from the Jacaba um, brand it's an ink brand it's quite affordable as well they have different colors um, I got this coral one I'm gonna show you why I got this one as well even though I still have the other one let me see if I so as you can see this one here it has a different uh, pattern of ridges at the tip they are all straight so 
I want to do a test with this one to see if because it has this straight pattern maybe the flow will be more um, regular and easier to control than this one you can see the difference it's also thicker here so I wonder if we can hold more um, ink or I don't know I'm gonna test both of them now to see the differences and something that's interesting also with this um, Elba glass pen, it comes with this little um, sandpaper bit that you are supposed to use to sharpen it. Once you use it a lot, I, it gets a bit blunt, so you can use to sharpen it. So that's neat as well. So what else? Um, now I'm gonna do some organization here, clean up a little bit so I can um, get a piece of paper and show you about this pen here. I'm gonna test with this ink and this ink or even maybe this ink as well to see how it behaves and I'm gonna use this one as well to see to see if, if it's different after all. So I'm back. I have here a tiny piece of scrap paper to test. I have here the three inks that I mentioned and the two glass pens. And I'm gonna start with this one that I used throughout October with this ink that I said caused a bit of the issue. We'll see. So what I did was, I was uh, as I was dipping it, I was taking out the excess like this. Hope you can see it well. I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video as well, but I just got a microphone finally. So I hope that the audio quality has improved. And if you have any suggestions also how to improve um, my videos or if there's any content you would like to see, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to, to do what I can to make the whole experience better. So I think I took enough excess here right now. So we'll try to do some lines and see. What happened is when I took a lot of the excess of paint of ink I got a very faint line here when I didn't take a lot of the excess I still left a little bit I got a few, um, more opaque line but then you can see here what happened is that I got a thicker line and then it got thin again so I could not control very well the amount of ink that was being um, put on paper and I, I have the the feeling that is because the ink is thick and this spiral pattern over here kind of makes things a bit difficult to to control <laughs> As you can see here with this pen, I got very, very fine lines, but at the same time, I don't get a lot of opacity like with the other pen. So that's interesting, the way it behaves. Let's try again with the sketching. <laughs> So you can see with this uh, ink, 
a little goes a very long way. Look at how many lines I was able to do with only one dip of the pen. And they're all pretty much the same. Only by the end here they got a bit lighter. But, I mean, it worked great with this pen. Um, that's a reason why I used it for the whole month for the challenge with this ink. I didn't have any surprises with it, so it was great. Now, let me try the second one and we'll see. As you can see, it worked perfectly with the herba pen, um, pen, glass pen and uh, sketch ink. So I really tend to believe now that this is more of a consistency problem. You can see that with only one dip I was able to do all of this line work and I probably could keep going a little bit more. And it was great, uh, it, wasn't, it didn't feel dry at all, like I felt a bit with the FW. I think um, both pens, they work very, very well with this type of ink. To finish it off, I'm gonna just try again with the, the Liquitex to see. As you can see I jinxed myself over here because right in the beginning I got again the big splotch of paint, the irregular thickness. So it's a bit of a hit and miss uh, with this spiral type of paint, um, of pen rather, I was thinking type of paint. With this spiral pen um, I'm gonna try now with the Hair bun. So, as you can see here, the line work with I that I made with the um, uh, hair bun. Uh, glass pen that is this one here it looks more um, regular a bit more reliable I'd say you can see here um, consistency more in color and in thickness uh, they didn't change thickness at all just by the end here when I almost had no ink it got a bit thinner but in general it's pretty consistent consistent and I mentioned before that I was going to talk about other type of challenges you can join if you um, are interested in this type of thing so we have uh, this month if I'm not mistaken for the other years there was uh, something called Hillvember um, I believe is uh, they give a different uh, colors uh, color palette uh, heels for I'm not sure if it's for the, the day or the week and then you create artwork with that type of color. I'm gonna I'm gonna all, uh, mention all here on the screen, and I'm going to edit the video. You have also the Folk Day Week. Uh, this month, I believe it starts on the 14th. I'm gonna leave also the information here on the screen. It's only a week, but there's lovely artwork um, for this challenge. You can see a lot of uh, artists that join. It's um, a lot of artwork based on this um, folk naive style of art like picture book uh, style that I really like 
so I'm gonna try to join this as well, we'll see how it goes. And in December we have also Childhood Week, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is um, a prompt list by Beatrice Blue, that is an artist I really like. Um, she has lovely artwork as well, she published a few books, a good few books actually and she has this challenge as well with a prompt list and um, i have um, all of this saved to my instagram i would advise you to check their instagram as well i'm gonna leave the info and then you can join if you wish or just follow uh, the artists that are joining you have um in mar in may you have mermaid challenge i participated a few years ago uh, it's just a month of people posting and painting and doing everything relating to mermaids and it's a fun challenge as well we have watercolor month in july so i'm pretty sure that you have you have a lot of um art challenges going on on instagram and probably on twitter as well i'm not on twitter but a lot of people also use twitter for that and apart from the monthly challenges something that i also find very interesting to join to i don't know sometimes um, you had a bit of a creative block you don't know what to do or you want to do something different is uh, draw this in your style uh, challenge a lot of artists post their original artwork with this hashtag draw this in your style you just have to create your own version of their artwork and post their artwork, their original artwork, of course, uh, and your version of it. It's a fun challenge as well. It's a lovely way to connect with your favorite artists and discover also other artists that have similar interests. I joined a few of these this year at the beginning of the year. I can show you now. Just give me a second. So I just went to take this little sketchbook I made for myself here using some um, Bucking for paper and I dedicated this little sketchbook to draw this in your style um, artworks so this one was promoted by um, Aroville at the beginning of the year she posted a photo of her little bird on a tree uh, branch and invited people to join and I thought it was a great opportunity to try um, do something because I really really like Aroville style she has lovely artworks so I did this little bird over here and then uh, here is where I had a bit of uh, testing for the colors that I used for this artwork this was another um, draw designer style I did I don't remember now from memory the name of the artist but I'm gonna put it here when I edit the video I'll check on my Instagram and what else this is another draw designer style I did um, for a monkey Mintaka. She did a bird with a few houses on its back, um, I think. So I did my version of it. I did this crow with a little house on its back. It was a fun one as well. I think these were the ones I, I did. Um, I'm gonna leave all the info here because I don't remember all of these. I didn't take notes uh, on the artwork itself, but I believe this was also a draw this in your style. And this as well. This was for Paloma de Peach, I remember. This was for Isadora. It's a Brazilian artist. I don't remember her whole handle. I'm gonna leave it here as well on the screen. And this, I believe, was Ellie versus Bear, but I'm not completely sure. I'm going to check afterwards and I'm going to leave it here on screen. So just to show you that there's a lot of challenges that you can join. And I think that all of these help me uh, push me out of my comfort zone, help me become a better artist by trying to use new materials or materials that I have in a different way or draw different subjects from what I'm used to using different techniques I think it's it's nice to sometimes challenge yourself a little bit and this definitely helped me 
learn a lot throughout the year so i really recommend this um an exercise if you want to push yourself a little bit if you maybe are in a creative block you don't really know where to go or just want to to connect with other people in a different way i really recommend this and if you want to check more of what i've been doing um throughout the month you can go to my instagram account at color Cairo. i have a link here below as well and i hope you liked today's video uh, it was a bit long-winded <laughs> more than i thought it would be i just wanted to talk about my experience doing these art challenges and also take the occasion to test the new pen that i got and i hope to see you soon i hope that you have a nice uh, weekend or day or whatever you're watching this and thank you for being here i see you soon bye